Friday nights during the fall. Six-man fans gather to watch a sermon of grit and determination be delivered by six men, ten minutes at a time, four quarters a night. Here you'll find the quarterback, but also the linebacker and the kicker. Where iron sharpens iron, where hard work pays off, and where six are one. Now for your host of Six is One, Coach Goldman. Welcome, Welcome to Six, six is One. one. Uh, this is Coach Goldman here with you today. today. We, we have, have Coach James Shelton, Shelton Buckholz with us. Uh, Coach, Coach, how are you doing? doing? Oh, I'm blessed, Coach. I appreciate you having me on. Yeah, no, thanks. thanks. Well, well Coach, Coach, this is, this is uh, one, one of those, those things where we've had a lot of technical difficulties pulling this off. We appreciate your patience in coming back on. on. Looking, Looking forward to, to, to digging down into some of the things that are going on at Buckles uh, this year and then also seeing a little bit more about uh, breaking down some film with you. Uh, but right now, uh, if you could, just give me a little bit of a bit of a backstory on kind of what led you to coaching, how you um, got the, you know, got to be the AD and uh, the football coach there at Buckles, uh, and that, that helps us out. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, man, uh, like you said, like you said, I'm Paul Buckles, originally a born and bred here. Uh, had a great school here, played junior high, high school football here. Uh, I blew my shoulder out my senior year twice, unfortunately, uh, which kind of ended. Uh, my own choice ended my football career. Um, so then from then on, I decided I was going to go to Texas A&M and, and uh, whoop, right? Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> and, uh, and, uh there I, I pursued a degree and I you know since I was a freshman in high school I knew uh, what I wanted to do I knew that I wanted to be a, a mentor to young men and women and you know, especially on the football side of it uh, you know my love for football really grew started my freshman year I had a had a gentleman by the name of Shea Avance who really came in and he inspired me he really turned my life around I come from a a real bad background, a single mom, a uh, single mom of five kids. And, um, and so I didn't, I, you know, I, I was on the streets by the time I was 15 years old, living on my own. And, you know, when Shay came in, he really took a young man who, who was in real big trouble, truthfully, and whose life wasn't going in the right direction. And he really got me on track. He, um, he made me fall in love with the sport of football. He really, he changed my life. He really just molded me into a man and uh, he used to always tell the boys and myself he said you know I don't just coach I'm here to mold young boys into men and I've really used that my entire life and especially my entire coaching career into doing exactly exactly this and so uh, once I graduated well actually let me back up a little bit uh, my junior and senior year of Texas A&M I I uh, got on with um, a school by the name of BCAL, Brazos Christian Athletic League. It was a homeschool six-man team who had just started out. They were the sister school of BD Chia, which I know you're very, yeah. very aware of them, Coach. And, uh, and so we, I coached there as a defense coordinator for them for two years, actually the only two years that they were a, a system. We had some really good seasons, and, and from then on, I, uh, I I hit a few stomping grounds, and I made a couple stops here in Central Texas. I went out to West Texas for two years where I made a stop in 11-man football in Alpine. Um, I was a defensive line, varsity defensive line, the JV um, head coach there. Um, no, defense corner, excuse me. Um, and, you know, I actually thought I was going to stay – Stay in the 11 man games for a little bit. I, I, you know, I kind of fell in love with the defensive side of the ball. Um, you know, just learning new things. It was great to see how an 11 man program was run. You know, considering I had never been in one, the most I had ever touched the 11 man game was um, playing in the Fellowship of Christian Athletes Bowl in high school. And so that was probably the furthest I had ever been in an 11 man. So it was a great, it was a great year that I got to spend there. Um, from then, I accepted a job at Cameron Yo as a defensive line coach, which was going to be great. Um, I was getting ready to move back from Alpine. This was June of last year. I got a phone call from the 
um, HR lady here at Buckholz, who was a happy to be a really good friend of my family's. And she said, hey, Coach Shelton, would you be interested in coming and taking over as the athletic director here at Buckholz? And, you know, without thinking, I was like, of course. <laughs> and, uh, I think it was an instinctive kind of reaction, but, um, you know, ever since I had started coaching, even knew that I was going to become coaching in my freshman year of high school, I always said that my, my long-term goal was to come back at Buck Rolls and lead this school, this system, this athletic program back to, you know, success and even bigger success than Hall of Fame coach, you know, Jimmy Hawk had already taken us. And, um, and so that is, of course, my goal. I didn't think I'd be back here as quick as I am, but um, it's been an absolute, you know, honor to come back. It's been nothing but a blessing that, you know, God has bestowed upon my life. And, you know, I I have my ups and downs. You know, I'm a young, very young coach, you know. Looking at it, I think I've tried to do some research. I believe, I think I'm the youngest athletic director in the state of Texas. Um, but... That being said, you know, I've really used my experiences to the betterment of myself, my program, my boys. Um, and, you know, we've done good things. You know, last year in football, unfortunately, we had, we had two of our, uh, our seniors who were all region kids get hurt in the first two weeks of the year, which really had to change the dynamic of our team. Uh, we had to change our offense, unfortunately. Um and really, the, the the injury bug kind of plagued us throughout the year. We fell to a to a really good, you know, McDade squad at the end of the year, um, which kind of kicked us out of the playoffs. Coach, I think you, I think you saw that. Game. Yeah, yeah, I yeah, did. Yeah. That's my that's, that's my, my first, first buckle game. game. So, so unfortunately for you, you <laughs> three more seconds. seconds. <laughs> yeah, we might not talk about that. One, so, but, uh, you might get a little tear in my eye. <laughs> Uh, Coach Andy Rivera over at McDade might have something to say about that. He a uh, great friend of mine. He like he likes to remind me every three weeks or so with a video <laughs> for the last ten seconds. Um, so he likes to rub that one in. But anyhow, uh, you know we went on to basketball, and I took a you know I I don't, I don't want to say I the Buckles bad boy squad. Um, they made history. They made the playoffs first time in a really long time. Um, I think it was only the second time in the last 20-something years to make the playoffs. And so it was just a historic season. Again, the injury bug hit us right before the playoffs, unfortunately. It took my uh, my all-region center out. But um, yeah. uh, we just we continue to do big things throughout the year, uh, taking kids to the regional track meet and uh, – not just athletically, academically, we did big things. And so the program is getting on track. And I always tell the kids, you know, I came in from the very beginning and I got all the parents and all the kids in a meeting. And I said, guys, this is how I look at it. You're going to get on the train or you're going to get off. And so, um, and man, the kids have just, they have just grasped on and won't let go. They really jumped on. And they're really building. They love what we're doing. Um, you know, a great a great show of that, Coach, is, you know, we had our first summer workout this morning, actually. Um, I actually just got back from and I'm nice to suntan already. Um, but we have 14 boys in high school, and 13 of those boys were at summer workouts getting ready for football in the weight room this morning. And so, you know, again, very few kids in our high school. I think we're, we're high 30s, low 40s. Um, with the predominantly female, but um, the entire boys, you know, class, I guess you could call it, is on board. You know, they're ready, they're, they're behind me, they're ready to fight, um, and they're just, they're just ready to be badgers, you know. I mean, and that means something to me. You know, I bleed orange and black, as I always tell the boys. And so le- having them and seeing their heart every day uh, progress and and just get better more and more every day. It's just an absolute godsend. And so I can't thank him enough for that. And so every day I get to live my dream. And, you know, that's that, that's the blessing that I thank God for every day. That's great. Right. Right. So John, John would drill down, down on a number of things, things that you touched, touched on there and uh, shared with us. You know, you know one, one that I think that a lot of folks don't understand, understand that, 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 that in the six-man world, 
is the injury bug, right? right? I mean, especially when you're a D2 program like yourself, and for almost the vast majority of my coaching is six men up in D2. Uh, we just recently were blessed to move to D1. But, um, you know, the injury, you just don't have I mean, you mentioned something about how you just ran through it like it was nothing. Yeah, yeah, we, we lost, lost a couple, couple of players and completely had to change our offense. But, but I mean, you know, that, you know, to talk, talk a little bit about, you know, about how, how crucial just one player, and it doesn't even have to be the star, can be to a D2 program and what you have to do the next week. Well, you know, you said it. Um, unfortunately, it was our star. Um, <laughs> you know, our starting quarterback, starting linebacker, he um, – fantastic kid, you know, he was he a was senior, um, coming off a really good year last year when they made the playoffs for the first time in, I believe, half a decade, um, you know, just a very, very bright young man who was the kind of man that you could say, you know, hey, if you see something, hot check, you know, change that play right there, take over, be a field general, um, and, you know, we came out two days, we had a we had a playbook ready, we were set up for, you know, I thought, you know, really big success. We were going to shock some people. And then the very first scrimmage, we come out, he gets speared and gets his third concussion of his career. And his parents decide he's done with sports for the year. Uh, you know, two games in, my starting uh, fullback runs straight up the middle, gets speared, you know, right up the, right in the head, tears something down his neck. And he's out for the season. Um, and so the dynamic of our team in week three completely had to change. We, uh, we went from a tight, you know, uh, Vance Jones, Brownberry kind of offense, and we had to spread it out. My spark from the Seaver, who was, of course, a, a fantastic young man, racked up lots of numbers, but we had to go to a straight spread set. And uh, I had to put my start receiver back and spread back. And, uh, you know, it just, like I said, it changed the whole dynamic of yeah. our team. And, you know, it took a game plan that we had had for four two days, you know, what I was certain was going to be a successful program into on the go, these kids have to change everything they've been taught overnight. And, uh, but, you know, they did it. You know, they, they really, they overcame adversity over and over and over again. And that's what we had to preach every week is, oh, how are you going to react? How are you going to respond to this adversity? And so, you know, they just, they just love, you know, I wouldn't say loved it, but I love watching them overcome the adversity week by week by week. And, uh, and you know, I, I don't say that we were a failure. I thought I was, I was, I was season was an absolute success because, again, we had to overcome so much adversity, and I think that adversity really um, slingshot us into basketball, and which made us that much stronger mentally um, to, to go down and, and face these, these really hard you know, teams in basketball, even, and then make the playoffs. And so I think this year, you know, we lost, we're losing a lot of teams from this past season, um, but we have a whole lot of juniors and sophomores coming back who, you know, really were the backbone of our offense and defense last year. And they know that adversity. They know how to overcome it now. And so I cannot, you know, I, I am just, I cannot wait to see what they do with it, you know, without that injury. But, you know, knocking on wood, of course. Um, but just see them thrive in a program that they really bought into a whole year already. And because, you know, you said it earlier, Coach, uh, longevity and consistency is so huge in any kind of football, any kind of story program. You look at any story program, the Richmond Springs, you know, the Gordon Counties, the Boundaries, the Garden Cities, uh, you know, I'm just thinking UIL, of course, you know, San Antonio Feast. Um, yeah. You look at these programs and you look at who their coach was. I mean, it was a one person. It was a coach who has who really dug in his, his roots, and the kids from elementary school can buy into that program. And that's what these kids don't know. Coach, these kids in the last 15 years have had over 10 head coaches. You know, that is not something they know. And so when I came in first day, I straight told them, I said, you cannot play for the coach. You have to play for the school, the orange and black. You have to play for each other. 
I said, I hope that one day I can gain enough respect for my consistency, uh, for my longevity, to, to for you to play for me, to play with me. But, uh, but you know, that's something that they've had to learn to do is play for themselves because, you know, I'll tell you one thing, Coach, my first week I come in this summer, I had three senior boys come up, and we were talking. And one of them popped off to the other. I heard them on the other room, and they said uh, they were. T- I told them about our offense, and they said, uh, "Oh man, he's bringing in this new offense. He'll be gone by midseason." <laughs> you know, and hearing something like that just showed you, you know, what they expected. They yeah. weren't used to that longevity, that consistency. And so giving them that year, coming back this year strong, we've got a great summer program set up for them to be, you know, successful. I've got all the boys already coming. Um, it means the world to them. It means the world to them, not just because I'm a coach to them, but I'm family. I'm literally family to one of them. But yeah, yeah, let's talk about that, that coach. coach. You, you, you have a rare, rare – you, you, you have, have a, a brother. brother. Not, Not a son, but a brother, brother on the team, team that you will be coaching. coaching. That's, That's a, a tell us a little bit about that, that isn't it? Yeah. You know, how, how are you handling that? that? Yeah, I sure do. Uh, my youngest brother, uh, we are ten years apart, and uh, he he will be a senior this year. He was a junior for me last year. Um, he's going to be one of my team captains. Uh, you know, he is really he's really the reason I. I I would put in that we have been excited for myself and so successful this year and coming into next year because he's really taken on that that senior leadership role, not just with the students, but with myself. He was a really good transition for me because he got the kids behind me. He got them on the boat. He got them on the ship, I guess you could call it. And uh, he's been a really good, you know, steering wheel for, for a program. Um, you know, Coming from a decade apart, um, he didn't grow up with myself, my older brother, and we we were really good athletes here, brother. Not the greatest, of course, you know, but we were pretty good athletes, and and so people know the last name Shelton when it comes to Buckles. Well, Kenneth, you know, that's Kenneth, you know, he he didn't grow up with us, so he always had to live up to a legacy that he was never going to live up to, unfortunately, due to the fact that. He grew up in a single household with a mother and a, and a little sister. And so I always tell him he didn't get to grow up tough. And, uh, <laughs> you know, I've really had, you know, I've really been able to step in in the past five years and really be that father figure more than a brother to him. Um, but, you know, coaching him has been an absolute blessing as well. Um, you know, because as you know, I know you've coached your sons and are still coaching your sons, coach. But uh, just being – being that father role, being able to be with him on a daily basis in the classroom, on the field, um, has only strengthened our bond. And um, and that really takes effect on the field because he's able to he's able to portray, I guess, all the things I want to say that I can't say. And uh, he's able to have the student athlete perspective for my team that I can't give them. And so it's only strengthened our program. And so, again, I mean, it's been an absolute blessing. Yeah, yeah and you coach, coach, you know, there's one thing that you said, said that, you know, that it's, it's not normal for, for, for some, some of our other programs, programs that, that we have. Sort of that you literally have, I think you said something like 50 kids in the entire, you know, school. And predominantly, you know, that are ladies, so, so you have 14, 14 uh, men and young men that are on the program, and 13 are playing for you, and that constitutes, those are your players for all your sports, whether it's football, basketball, track, I mean, that's that's your that's what you're running with, and, and you know, you have all of them buy in, especially in football, and have 13 out of 14 buy in, that's something incredible. So tell me a little bit about, you know, what, what makes it challenging to, to not, not just the numbers, numbers but the type of athlete that you have based, based upon what was, you know, what's it's like, like in buckles. buckles. Well, yeah, I mean, you know, the the overall outlook when it comes to sports and buckles is you play sports. You know, there is no if, ands, or buts. Usually, you know, because most of these boys, their parents, their dads, or or their moms play sports here, um, and so there's nothing else in buckles. <laughs> You know, if you want to really look at it, you got you got shotguns and four wheelers. Um, 
But there's not a whole lot going on in Buckles unless you're playing sports. You know, coming out on a Friday night, the whole town's in the crowd. Um, you know, you are looked upon as the heroes of that town. You are what people talk about all week, and you are what people write about in the, in the paper coming up all week. You are the, you know, the spirit in the, in the local coffee shop that the old men talk and, and pick apart every morning at 7 o'clock. <laughs> You know, a year, a year old man get a late start, start on the day. day. Ours are like 5 a.m. or something to come out there. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, well, I tell you what, I'm going to do earlier. Coach Wilkin gets that 7 a.m. Um, yeah, yeah, they're on their third, third pot, pot by, by then. then. Yeah. But, um, yeah, you got all the local preachers and farmers in there every morning, you know, waiting to tell Coach Shelton and how the world turns. <laughs> it, it's quite interesting to say the least. That's great. Yeah, yeah no, no, that's, 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 that's really, really good. good. So, um, Coach, Coach, give me a little bit of uh, insight into what the uh, season is you know, shaping up to be this coming year. Yeah, I know that you have the game now in the, um, in the, in the poll as part of the district, but you've always had over the game Calvert. And, and, you know, it's, it's always interesting for me to know which are the schools that are you know, of those two that are really the, that's the true rivalry. Sometimes, you know, well, if you want to look back in the history, Coach, you're gonna you're gonna have to pick the oldest B Buckles um, schools to be the rivalry, no doubt. Um, I you know, I don't want to give you an exact number because that could be off, but I know last year we broke the tie for the win and loss record. Um, and so we Buckles is one up now. And I you know, it's in it's in the high High 30s, 40s, 50s, I can't remember exactly, but it's way up there. Ever since Buckles began, they've been playing Oglesby. Gotcha. So that's definitely, if you want to talk to the coffee shop men in the morning, <laughs> that's, that's what they care about. about. The yeah. Oglesby one. Yeah. And, um, you know, they'll tell you how they played in the leather helmets and ran up the ice. <laughs> yeah, the ice hill in, in Texas. Texas. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Um, <laughs> but you know, that's definitely the the story to rivalry. Um, I guess myself, though, um, I guess even on a on a personal level, the rivalry is going to be the Calvert Buckles game. Um, not so much that you know we're trading off wins as much as I like. <laughs> But uh, more of a, you know, as a as an athlete myself, as a coach, um, you know, I set our goals to, on the roof. You know, I set those those unattainable, the kids you never see it happening kind of goals because I know that's where we can be, and that's beating Calvert. You know, Calvert's a storied program who has always been successful. Has been district champs, I believe. You know, the last twenty years since they went back to being six men. Mm-hmm. And um, you know, so it, it's it's you know, you know, I know we've we've spoken before. It's funny because the superintendent and the principal in my interview to get the job, they at the very end of the meeting, they said, "Coach, there's one question I got to ask you, and if it's going to make or break whether we hire you or not." And I said, "Okay, well, what's that going to be?" And uh, my superintendent said, "Can we beat Calvert? Are we going to beat Calvert?" And um, and of course, I said yes, um, you know. And so, but that's that's the mentality of the town: is when is Buckles going to be Calvert? That is what we work for on a day to day basis. You know, I can tell you what: we might go zero and nine into the last game of the season, but if we beat Calvert, you better believe that Buckles <laughs> is going to turn into the Cleveland Browns and win the one game of the year. Yeah. Uh, that you know that that means a lot to them, and you know this isn't taking anything away from McDade or Oglesby at all because they have fine, fine coaches and great kids and great programs. But um, yeah, they've been at the top of the hill. Where it's at, you know, yeah. that's the top of the hill that you want to. That's that ice hill we want to get on top of. Right. <laughs> uh, but on a personal level, coach, is something you might not know is is um, the head coach, the AD over at Calvert now on a personal level for me. Is actually one of my best friends in this this entire world, Demarcus Ashley. Um, you know, him and I grew up together. He went to Calvert, I went to Buckle, 
since we were, I can remember back all the way to third grade when we were competing in UIL against each other, <laughs> you know, from junior high to high school football, um, all the way to both of us going to Texas A&M together. And, uh, you know, we both graduated from Texas A&M. We both became athletic directors at our alma mater. And, um, and so this past season was the first time we got to coach against each other. And unfortunately, it didn't roll my way, but um, but just being able to do that makes it a personal rivalry for me. And uh, you know, I love that man more than more than you know, own my own family and blood, uh, all but about four hours of the year. Yeah, yeah that's, that's awesome. awesome. No, no that, 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 that that has, has a, the makings of a really you know great, great future, future story down, down the road. road. Uh, you know, you know, to see, see how, how that develops, develops. because I think, I think that, that is the, the great thing, thing about the one of the consistency thing about rivalries is the respect that you don't, don't have a rivalry if you don't have respect to playing. The fans, fans can have their emotions and everything, but I think any, any player that's really invested, uh, uh, what it stems from is just a total respect for, for their opponent. Uh, it's very, very difficult to have a true rivalry and not be respectful when you're, you know, going up against. Uh, so, so that's that's, that's great, great that the two of you can uh, it starts at the top and it always does and that's that's, that's gonna, gonna be a fun one to watch. And Coach, Coach, I will let you know and I'll share with you, you know, off uh, off mic that I do have uh, Coach Ashley on the schedule this year, so that's gonna be a that's gonna be a hard game for us as well. And the reason we I reached out, we want you know to play a story program like that. That's one of the great things about having a program like he's taking over is people. You know, reach, reach out, out and want to play you because you are who you know, and you had that kind of success. And that's you know, that's one of the reasons why we we you know wanted desperately to have them on schedule and they blessed us by doing that because we want to we want to play you know some of the best so we can you know see how we stack up and, and see how we fare and, and even though we're in different divisions this year when I first reached out we weren't we went to D two D one that's a that's a whole different. You know, ball of wax in and of itself, but um, you know, it'll still be a, a great opportunity. So, Coach, uh, I got you know one kind of funny question for you, um, and that is, um, I googled this, and there are badgers in Texas. I couldn't even believe that. But have you found any badgers in, in Buckholz? Yeah, Coach, of course I have, man. I think we got about 42 in high school. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there you go. go. <laughs> but the, the, no, the, the furry ones aren't there, there right? right? <laughs> yeah, no, nah, Coach, you, you're not going to find any badger den sitting around here. i tell you what, the only badger den we had is a sand volleyball court that I created last year. <laughs> we, we, we call the badger den because the boys hate going to it and doing all the summer workouts in it. <laughs> it's about as close to the badger den as you're going to find around here. That's so, great. That's, that's great. great. Well, well um, the, the, uh, at this, at this, this juncture, what I'd really like to do is, is try, if you don't mind staying along with this, coach, get in some film. film. Uh, because, because I think that'd be great to spend a little more time on film. film. So, uh, those, those of you that are listening on the podcast, podcast, this is where we're going to part ways. And I appreciate we ask you to, uh, like and share, uh, with whether you're on SoundCloud or however you're, uh, listening to this. But if you'd like, join us at any time on YouTube661.com. And, uh, at YouTube is where we can pick up and we'll be going over with Coach, uh, some of the film from, from last season. So uh, sit tight, and we'll catch, catch you on the other side. side. Welcome back to Six is One. I have Coach Shelton with me with Buck Holtz. Uh, for those of you that are catching us on the flip side, this is where we go over film with coaches. This is one of the things that... When I started this program, I really like is to sit down with coaches and do go through the X's and O's because we all know the guy with the chalk last wins. <laughs> and since <laughs> I'm the guy manipulating the film, I, you know, I get the unfair advantage. Um, coach, you there? I'm here. I'm ready. Let's do this. Uh, let's do this. All right. So I have to, you know, I, I get the coaches are blessed me by sending me some film over. and and, and But the one thing I had to do is – I had to put in my own lines for kicking coach. So I've, I've had this happen several times, and it is the darndest thing, is when you kick off and they don't stripe, 
the the 35 because that's the retaining line on the defense right so i yes, always sir. i always find it i always find it you know as we move forward here you know I argue that uh, it was illegally. T- I don't care whether this illegally touched or not. I always argue it because they, who knows, you know? Uh, yeah. But tell me, do y'all not mark this for a reason? I'm just curious. I've always wanted to ask a coach. Well, coach, let me let me give you two explanations for the reason why we don't do every five yards. Yeah. Um, for our purposes, we practice like that. So maybe we can get maybe that one kid over there is their twelfth best guy. And hopefully he just got on the field and he doesn't know where the 15 yard is either. <laughs> and secondly, coach were poor and we can't afford to stripe every line because then we run out of paint. <laughs> I just I think it's it's the darndest thing because we actually, um, you know, the first time that ever happened to me as a coach, I, I they, my players are looking at me like you said they're all like, what do we do? <laughs> because <laughs> we can't practice that at our field we actually <laughs> so um yeah well, well oh, the referees hate me for that i bet i bet yeah I, I was i always find that uh that's definitely a, that's a homer thing right there i just had to bring it up coach so i'll, I'll move on to some real football but <laughs> but but you're not alone i can tell you there are quite a few out there that that are using that technique uh so uh let these play through so what's what is this format? What is, what is the form you call? I mean, everybody has different names for dips, but you've got basically a spread formation, but you're moving that that sort of that blocking back from the typical diamond up close to the center. Um, what is this formation, and you know why why the personnel set with the the guy up close to the center? All right, coach. Well, we call this our uh, our J Pro uh, in the spread set. Um, and so you got the pro set because you have the the end right next to the center with the with the j man out yeah. and so that you re- it's really just a j spread it's a j spread right is what it is and um and so it's really just j but it's extended and, and so what that does is you know my best player is actually the guy you have circled there is my end spot he's my number one receiver um what that does is i have him read so he reads that the safety right over the top there. This if the here. safety goes back, he's gonna he's gonna stop five and follow quarterback. If he doesn't, then he's gonna go left right on a flag or a post. And if it's a run, he's able to determine whether my spread back is going inside or outside. Gotcha. So that that is the key. This is the focal point of this is to put you're a better athlete here to make those decisions. And then, uh, like you said, he, he's reading this guy right here. Correct, coach? Yes. Sir. Okay. Yeah, I mean it's it's interesting. I, I I've seen it a couple, but not as much as y'all y'all run it. So uh, that's why I will let this play just go through, and uh, you know here he is going out. I mean, you know some good block and, and then take off. Now, are you the same way that uh, a lot of coaches are? If 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 you've got an athlete that I mean, are you run first out of that out of that spread? Uh, if because. He's, Absolutely. You know, I'm sorry to interrupt yeah. you there, man. Yeah, um, last year especially, um, like, you know, we had talked previously, um, this young man, number two in the backfield, um, he is actually an all-region wide receiver um, who was had to, you know, we, un, due to injuries had to be put back to the spread back. And so he has always run first. And so what we're doing here is we are backing him up enough to give him that eyesight, that vision. And, of course, he's going to want to be run first. Um, I know his up back nose to, to make the block first. And then, of course, like I said, I have that end inside um, yeah. finding opening for him in case he's in trouble, in case they want to rush three. Right. Okay, so uh... – uh, so yeah, you know, in your up back here, and I, you know it gets a little blurry here. But what are you what are you asking him out of this formation? Is he a blocking back primarily? Does he block to release, or what 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 are you coaching here to to the up back? You know, it's it's really according to who we're playing. Um, if they have you know real strong guys coming at you, um, he's a he's a block first. If of course again it's to the play. You know, if we are a straight sweep out of this, of course he's going to go and cut that first uh, rusher. 
Um, if we are a drop back pass route, he's going to be a blocker. So, you know, coach, it's really just according to what uh, the defense is as well as the play set there. So, um, so it is a run pass option, but, you know, it's just according to who we're playing. I think we're playing round rock right here. Um, and so he was that my up back here is, is, um, is blocked first almost every time. Okay. And, and now do you bring those, uh, you know, the J back or the wide receiver on, on, on either side, do you ever crack with those guys on the sweeps or do you have them go to the second level? We do crack. Yes, sir. We crack on the, um, on the left side crack sweep. Uh, we'll, we'll do a motion crack sweep. You know, we got a few out of that, but we do like that receiver to come in and crack. Okay. Yeah, and and so do you? Yeah, that's one of those ones right there. Where you tell the guy, look, if you see the back of his, head, don't hit him. <laughs> you, you know, yeah, you know, you know, it's and it's one of those things where a young official, it's it shouldn't make that call, and that was a no call there. Um, oh, let me get into this one here, but young officials will make that call, and I, I was, I don't know, I've shared with you or not, I was an official back in when I was a young younger man. But uh, they'll make that that call, unfortunately, and it's behind the play. It's not really a factor. It wasn't vicious, you know. It's just a t- tap, right? But you just tell these kids, don't. It's not necessary. It's not going to affect the play. Only thing it's going to do is bring it back. It's oh, not, absolutely. Not going to help us one bit. Uh, you know, I tell the kids all the time. I said, look. I said, once the running back or the spread back is passed, you put your hands up and watch. Yeah. Because um, you're only going to hurt the play if you keep on trying to do something different. Yeah. No. It it is, and it's going to get seen in six man because you know it's there's just not you no place to hide. That's one of the the other things. Those those blocks in the back or the shoulder or you know kind of and you always question you right you know the player yeah he wasn't his back coach i, I got my head in front <laughs> yeah film always never, yeah film never lies that's why my, my standard line film never lies don't worry I, I believe you film never lies um so yeah you mentioned the motion so um you're bringing him across the formation here uh, so kind of what, what are the, what are the things that you are doing with this? When you bring this guy, you know, in motion, you're going to bring him and you're going to set him right here. So is this typically like, hey, all of a sudden we're going to see if they adjust, if they don't, we're sweeping. Is that absolutely, absolutely. So what this does is, you know, we're, we're going to use, use this usually when they have a pretty strong cornerback there that we want to get out of the way. Uh, we want to see if that cornerback's going to follow, if that safety is going to take over and he's going to replace the safety, um, also what this will do is if they don't have a real strong safety is what I'll do is I'll take that motion man mm-hmm. and I'll run a fly route on my, 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 uh, outside receiver and I'll run a little quick out like with here. that motion man. Absolutely. Like there, and, so, kind of and so he's going to be guaranteed a quick 10 yards. Um, yeah. if that safety goes, if that safety bite, I mean, that cornerback bites on my motion man, then I'm wide open over the top. And so it really just makes the decision of the cornerback. He has to make a decision on what he's going to do. And I have to have a, you know, a, a strong quarterback vision to, to make that play. Gotcha. So if you fly this guy and you run this guy to the flats, now the person that's going to make the throw to the flats is going to be the up back, or is that going to be the – It's going to be the spread back because he's be... in the RPO still. Okay. Um, yeah, I didn't know how quick you hit it. So he sort of blocks to kind of give the fake and then – to give enough time for the pitch to get back you know? absolutely yeah okay uh you know i don't know how the play ended up i just thought it was motion i think it was a really bad pitch back and number yeah. two had to make something happen out yeah. of it yeah no i mean uh you know part of it is just a more discussion kind of what the, the thought process is so here we are on the you're all on the defensive side like this um uh, now, from what I can, you know, I only get a smattering of film. Uh, are you a? Do you believe in staying with kind of a core base defense, Moses, or do you bounce it around based upon who you're playing, or how how do you approach defense, coach? And you mentioned well, you earlier know, you do a lot of defense. You're a defensive coach. Yeah, um, you know, this actually this is my first year that I actually had to be the offensive coordinator. I had a real great young defensive coordinator this year, but um, I, I believe when I, you know when I first started. You know, I was that guy who would, you know, I saw this team and I watched all this film and I said, oh, well, this defense worked against him, so I'm going to run this against him. Well, I come to come to find out that is not the best way to go. <laughs> and so I'm a, I'm a solid, uh, I'm a solid 3-1-2 guy. 
Um, I got it out of Joe Helms out of uh, out there in West Texas, and um, so I'm a, I'm a solid three one two guy. Now I have all kinds of different looks out of my three one two that make it a three two, that make it a three three, that makes it a two two and spread. Um, but our base defense is always going to be a three one two. So I mean, here it almost looks like you're getting close to a four two because you've got you know. But you know, so which one's the guy? Is this the one that's kind of the drop back guy on the one uh, out of the three one two? Which, you know. yeah, your your middle linebacker there is uh, no, he's going to be the third guy over there in the middle. He's creeping up for a blitz. Oh, this one right. here. That's this is the guy that comes. That's your yeah. That's that looks your mic. like he's going to be the middle linebacker. So he's creeping up and. And it looks like maybe he's got – my defense coordinator might have him on a blitz right there. My right. two safeties, um, you can tell, right, here. right yeah. back there. Yeah. yeah and so it's, it's a 3-1-2 with, that, um, with the middle linebacker looking like he might be going on a blitz. Gotcha. Okay. So he's coming up. And so your, your ends are staying pretty wide on that 3-1-2. So that, I'm guessing it's just contain, contain, contain. It is, um, especially against his round walk team. They have a young spread back who can absolutely got some wheels on them. Um, and so I know my middle linebacker is going to take care of him if he comes up the middle. And so we had to keep him, had to keep him contained, or we were going to be in big trouble. Yeah. And so now, you know, this is against against the spread. Um, you know, with, interestingly, you you got a guy head up on the center. I mean, I mean, you're bringing two. This is more of a two 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 look. Like you said, you may have a three one two, but it's looking like a two 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 here. But part of that was you you hit that center every every time from what i could tell or at least in this game you know tell me a little bit about what you do with the you know is that game specific is it schematic and we're gonna we're gonna knock that guy every every play what's what's the thought process here it's absolutely game specific right here um so if you look on the right side there you have my he's gonna be my stud number two mm -hmm. i've brought him up from um from my middle linebacker because he's gonna press that receiver he's almost gonna play an outside in there um the other guy, the other end on that other side, again, is right. actually my, my little brother who we had talked about. He's going to be probably our best defensive end. I know he's not going to let somebody outside. And um, and they've been throwing to this center um, a lot of times this game. And we have, I have two real young, inexperienced safeties who just cannot get back to the middle. So um, my big uh, nose tackle, what I'm telling him every time, is flatten this kid and then go get him. You know, give yeah. us that little bit of second for our ends to be able to make a play. And so what I'm giving up is I'm giving up that right side, but I'm pressing that receiver knowing that he's going to be able to come in and make that tackle. And you see he did that just there. Yeah, He's pressing that receiver almost as an end, and then he's going to break off that receiver and come make a tackle if they choose to run. Yeah, and so here you have uh... – uh, so, you know, this is uh, you know, kind of interesting here. So, you know, when you're playing the, the defense, you know, I guess this, this is not, to me, this is still a – spread formation a little tighter but still spread mm -hmm. um when you're you're telling this defensive end is he have are you bringing two every time or does he have some kind of pass coverage on a back out of the backfield when they've got three you know three stacked back um, well right there it's it's according if we're running 31 32 or 33 and so uh, i'm not sure what we're running right here um out of the 31 he's gonna have up back contained out of the 32, he's not. Out of the 33, he's not. So it okay. looks like here that he didn't. Right. Um, it looks like, you know, I had I had two rushes, one drop back. And so that would be the 33. And so that's what it looks like to me there. Yeah, and so you have you had this the center peel off with the center. I mean, the nose guard peel off with the center. Right, and so that's our up. 33. And so he knew that the center was going to go. So I got two... Two on a full blitz, and then the, the center sits back. And if the center takes off, he's going to go with. If he doesn't, he's going to go sideline to sideline. Gotcha. I just want you to know we're going to go to another set that uh, you have more paint than we do if you can put a B that big on the middle of your field. I'm just <laughs> pointing that out. Uh, that was homecoming, Coach. Uh, uh, only one time a year. Okay, because I was like, say, uh, you, you don't – you give me that poor man on the paint budget, and I know that I, we've got little small shields <laughs> that cost me a fortune. <laughs> and if I, yeah, that's the one time a year I let the seniors do that big thing. <laughs> Because I'll never forget my parent come up and say, "Why, why is you know aren't the numbers bigger?" <laughs> I said, "Because you aren't paying enough." 
<laughs> I don't get numbers. We don't. We have uh, yard markers. We don't do numbers. Yeah, I mean, ours are pretty small. <laughs> but you know, I always told them you're getting really good seating. You're pretty close anyway. So uh, let's see what we got here. I don't even know what uh, this one's. Oh, you know what we got, Coach? Let's see. It's one of those ones that I got to go through and. Well, hang on. Bear with me, Coach. There we go. I can get to where I'm trying to get. There we go. Let's see if we can roll it forward. <laughs> All right. So you're gonna you're gonna be strong here on the on the left hand side. This is your J Pro, correct, Coach? Yes. And but then you're gonna run to the wide side. So is that you know? I guess what's the thought process of of setting him left, and then you know is it you seeing something? I mean, what's the you know as opposed to setting him on the right side and running because that's a pretty now they got those hash marks. I guess you get your home field. They got hashes pretty far over. Yeah, I think what we're doing here is uh, their best defender right now is their left end. Um, he's a big old cat, about six five, and he's their he's their MVP on the defensive side, no doubt. And so what we're doing here is we're just pretty much telling my spread back, hey man, you you're gonna it's gonna be two on two. You're gonna have one man to beat on the white side, and just go you know go make something happen. Yeah, that's a good block getting down to his feet. You know, just tying him up for a second. There you go. You hate to see that. But, yeah. Yeah. But the uh, uh, but yeah the the block was there, which which is all you need. Just slow him up. Just make him absolutely. Yeah. Uh, give me a little bit of your thought process on the new blocking. I mean, you know, we both have. For years, you know, that ability to block downfield, block load, you know, it's now no, no longer a part of the game. What are, what are you thought your thought process on that? How are you coaching? What do you, how is it affecting? If it is affecting at all, anything that you're doing? You know, I think, coach, what what's a what's affecting of us the most, and I think what's gotta gotta happen in the in the referee training, I guess you could say, for six man, is just the lack of knowledge of what it is. Um, you know, it's, it's really a down the field, um, you know, danger. And, um, and so I've always taught, you know, cut down field, you know, because this is six man football, you know, I, I'm working with kids who are buck 20 soaking wet against, um, you know, sometimes some kids who are, who are six, two, six, three, 200 pounds. And so we, you know, we teach the cut block pretty, pretty profusely. And, um, but what we ran into this year is we ran into some, you know, referees who, who decided that in six man football, you can't cut at all. Yeah. I mean, yeah, like this one here is obviously perfectly legal. He starts inside the tackles, although, you know, there's this magical tackle box in six man, you know, he's going to come, he's going to come out of that and he's going to go straight at the, you know, he's a smaller guy, he's a bigger guy coming, boom, right there. That's it. You know, that's perfectly legal. You know, oh, that was a beautiful cut. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, and you know, and that's and that is one thing too. That's why I think is is excellent. You know, people say, well, he didn't get him. Yeah, he got him what he needed to do. He slowed him up. It's all. You know, right. It's all you need. I, I don't need to don't need to go bouncing off his chest. You know. Uh, but the uh, the ones that, of course, you know that they have taken away certainly the cutback from that wide receiver coming back and going low. Um, you know, what do you what do you coach when you do have the the crack on this? So if this guy is is coming in to block uh you know maybe on that end uh what are what are your uh you know mechanics there what are you telling folks now to, when they're coming back in well so what's going on on here is i'm teaching that cornerback right there to, to to screen crack i mean he's screaming crack to the defensive end defensive end has seen these cracks all all week in practice um what he's doing is he's working on getting his shoulder inside you know he's going to make sure that his back's to him He's shuffling out that way. He that receiver is not allowed to hit him. Um, what's going on there is the safety is going to take that crack man. The corner is going to read run, and the corner is supposed to see crack and take off. He's supposed to go straight backfield to make that tackle. He doesn't do it right here. Yeah. Uh, but that's what he's taught. You know, he's taught to warn the end that the crack's coming, and then take over that end's job in the outside containment. Okay. Yeah. The um. Let's get into. I'll have, see if we watch a few, roll a few a few other plays forward. 
Let's see what we get. So uh, I didn't even pay attention here, Coach. Who, who are we playing? We're playing Oglesby right Oh, this here. is Oglesby. Okay. All right. Uh, so you had them at uh, you had them at home this year. I did. I did. It was the last game of the of the of the year. This was senior night. Yeah. So tell me what we got going on here. Well, it looks like we got a straight uh, spread set. This is our two back spread set. Um, you know, it looks like we're about to run downhill. We got our big boys set up to go make a good block, and, and it looks like number two is about to go make a play. Just a simple sweep right here, it looks like. Oh, he might have turned it into a, a pass play. Yeah. Yep, he did. He, he lofted it up. So, I mean, the the thought process, just give me a little bit of the thought process on um, – how much leeway that spread back has uh, on plays like that? I mean, is that a call from up top? Do you you tell him, look, we're, we're throwing this time, or do you give him, you know, is that a complete and total read every time? Oh, no, he's a complete read, man. Um, luckily, I was I inherited a, an amazing young man at spread back. Like I said, he was a receiver, but he's just – he's very smart, had great vision. Um, I was blessed – you know, this upcoming year to have a transfer in who's going to be able to do the same thing. Um, but he, he's given it. I call the RPO and he's given the authority to find the opening. He's, you know, he, of course he's run first, but it, if he believes that he has a wide open receiver, then he's given that, that go and that green light to make that throw. All right. We got, we got a little defense here. So um, as we roll through this, you bring in two, they're sweeping, uh, you know what's the let's back it up so you're going to play pretty tight you're going to come up here and play pretty tight when they bring uh you know two to the to the strong side looks mm -hmm. like uh is that normally the process are you in a man there or because they tried to cross basically is what they're trying to do there at the uh do you ever so, play, play a man or do you just no he's actually not supposed to be in a man uh that outside cornerback should be about uh about eight to eight to nine back with the front cornerback pressing yeah. uh, for the screen pass. I'm not sure what he was doing quite there. You know? <laughs> yeah, I know. I Whoever right. picked these plays, you know. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm just saying. The, uh, <laughs> but, you know, that's it's, it's one of those funny things. Uh, I go through mine. Every, my guys, I don't even know my team every week I do film. I'm like, really? This isn't the team I coach. This is, <laughs> exactly. This is, this is not what we can um, – but yeah, so you're normally going to back him off a little bit. You're going to let this guy press, uh, and that's what we see more of too. You know, it's it's it, and say, look, if you're going to try to make that hard throw over to the outside like this and try to square where this guy can just peel off and get to him anyway. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Go for it. Yeah. Yeah. We'll we'll let you we'll let you make that NFL throw every every Friday. Night. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You know, you know, and I say that, and then, you know, this year somebody's going to, you know, they're going to come on, we're going to be interviewing somebody that, that's whooped my butt, and it's going to say, we made that NFL throw every night. <laughs> like, yeah, well, we heard you on 6 as one yeah. say that we couldn't make it. So. <laughs> well, I didn't know you had Elway back there. Come on. <laughs> so, uh, you know, let me roll through. We'll, um, let's see if we can't get – see what else can – Roll through. I, I didn't have a chance, Coach. Apologies to some of the plays I had were for, from a wrong wrong team. So I didn't. I wasn't going to make you break down somebody else's team. That's even worse. Um, so we'll we'll make you at least break down your own team uh, as we get through. I don't know. That might be worse sometimes. I tell you yeah. what. So here we go. You got three up front again. That's that three. You're bringing all three. So that means you you're seeing run. So. Well, no, you drop. Here we go. We're dropping one. There you go. Now this is about to be a six-man play right here. This will give heart. This gives you a heartache. I don't even know how this winds up, but you know, can you see this, Coach? Oh, I can see it. Oh, uh, you even know the outcome. I'm guessing it's not that great. I know the outcome. Oh man. So here we go. Yeah, and that's not. What I always said on the uh, uh, on that play when you're having the the, the six man play is it's going to put a lot of pressure on just good like just there good open field tackling right absolutely you know and that that young man who made the tackle he uh, I can brag about him that was my little brother um, you know he, he he read it really well 
you know, it looks like I think he fell on that way, that play because uh, I think we ran a we ran a 31 right here. So what's going to happen? No, I'm sorry, we ran a 32 right here. Yeah. Oh, that that um those up backs are supposed to have. I mean, those ends are supposed to have up back coverage, and it looks like he bit on the on the spread back and left them open, and yep. he got the he got that crazy backside pass, you know, off of a being tackled and. But he was able to come back and make an open field tackle, so you know that's that's a blessing in disguise. Yeah, that's 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 part of it is the this the ability to really tackle in the open. That always is the uh, you know the, the biggest part. So let's just look. Here we go. You've got you've got a diamond set here, Coach. Walk us through. We're gonna throw the ball up. That's the play we actually there. Oh, sweep. Let's see if I can't uh, get to. These didn't come. I I got there. They're not broken up as much, so I'm having to. I'll, I'll get my get my game together next time we're we're together, coach. So you don't have to see some you see so many penalties that are in your favor. Yeah, <laughs> but you can watch the other side, coach, going nuts. <laughs> I was waiting for you to give me a good one here, man. Good night. <laughs> I mean, go. I know we scored like nine times in this game. Yeah. I know you could give me something there, Coach. Yeah, Come well, on. I'm here. Here you go. <laughs> here you go. I have no idea. But so you run into the short side. I'm out of curiosity. How often do you run into the short side of the field? I mean, is that you try to keep it, you know, and this is really more a coaching question because I'm a big fan of, of running. You know, a lot of people won't do that. Go, we'll see that on film that, you know, if they, they will run – 80 90 percent into the wide side of the field mm -hmm. uh, well, just, see, coach, i'm you know i'm a six-man guy i grew up playing six man and you know there's something i've learned about six men is unless you're playing the border counties the richmond springs the calvitz you know there's going to be a weakness somewhere on that defense and the majority of the time is it's going to be on that weak side they're gonna, you know, you're gonna, you're gonna put your strongest in. You know, I do. I fall into the same trap. I put, you know, I'll switch my ends just to put my best, you know, defensive end on the strong side because, like you said, ninety percent of plays is gonna go to the wide side. Yeah. And so you want to almost try to run and beat that one on one with that backside end or that backside safety because they do the same thing with safeties. You know, I think, mm. you know, I've fallen into it where the injury bug gets me and so i gotta throw someone out there who doesn't use his play safety and so guess what they're gonna play yeah. they're gonna play the backside safety you know against the wide side of the field and so when i see that now of course i'm not running that as an actual play but if i see that you know being the situation i'm gonna run to the short side i'm never scared to run to the short side just because you know like i said if, if there's a weakness there i'm gonna try and um yeah. I'm try to take advantage of it. Athlete on athlete, if you can, you know, make it work. Yeah, certainly. Now I'm I've, I'm with you, coach. I, I think that's the same way. I mean that you know we we look and we say, hey, if there's a guy that you know goes down, especially you know, unfortunately for them, uh, and some kid coming in, you know, that's been sitting over there cooling his heels for a couple of quarters. <laughs> That's where we're going, <laughs> you know, and it, it seems like cliche, but it, and it may well be. And, and here's the crazy thing about it, and we know this as coaches, we can tell them it's coming your way and they still. <laughs> <laughs> that is too funny because I was just talking to somebody about that the other day. And I mean, you can tell that. I mean, you know, we're, we're coaches. We study, and there's only so much you can do to disguise your play calling and, and how your boys, you know your boys are going to react and, and I told I told a young man the other day I said I could call every defensive play or every offensive play that's coming your way, and for some reason you still don't stop it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. It, I, I, I've, uh, I'll end with it because we're gonna have to wrap up standing out of time. But I'll, I'll end with a kind of a funny story that when I was I had a kid that um, uh, I let him start calling his own game. It's junior. This is junior high, and he called the same offensive play seven times in a row. We scored five out of seven. <laughs> and uh, I finally, you know, on about the fifth score, um, and and we did, we had better, you know, we had the better athletes. I, I I called him over, but I had subbed in different people, you know, trying to keep the score down, right? So I've got, you know, third. I don't know if we had, we didn't have enough players to have third team because we never had that many players, but we definitely had, you know, the the most novice players in there. And I said, uh, I said, when are you gonna? Uh, I said, how many times are you gonna call that play? 
And he said, well, I guess until they stop it, coach. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, you know, out of the mouths of babes. Okay. You know, I wasn't, <laughs> he's just like, this is, this game's easy. And he made it sound look real easy. This is an easy game to call. <laughs> well, you know, coach, you know, that is, that is one of the last things I'll say. And that's, that's one of the greatest advice I've ever been told coming into coaching is, is I don't know if you know him, um, but Jeff Jones, he's the coach at Garden City, mm-hmm. and Vance Jones, who is the, the AD and the godfather of six-man over in Balmeray, they have both told me, and they have told many or many of coaches, is they would tell you, I will send you my playbook today on Huddle, because no matter what, if you know it or you don't know what I'm about to run, you still have to stop me. Yeah, yeah, I mean... <laughs> <laughs> you know that, and that's exactly what you're saying there, and it, and it comes down to absolute truth. And unfortunately, sometimes it's not X's and O's; it's Jimmy's and, and Joe's. Joe's. Oh yeah, <laughs> it's always it's always the case, and you know that that really is. And you know, it, we got in the state title game last year, lost our our uh, spread back, you know, leading tackler on the team, you know, all of that in the in the semifinal game, and we had to change. Uh, we became a we went from being a tight predominantly tight team to to spread and you know that it's kudos to those those young men that were in that is because they've been practicing that all season and did a very good job that was always our backup we just never u- had to use it right and it got all the way down to the championship game and we had to but the everything we had on film everything <laughs> was worthless you know, and the more I thought about it, I didn't think about it during the, that week in because you only have that one week, but it, and we were going to do what we were going to do. We'd been practicing all season if this scenario had taken place. But, you know, if I thought after the fact, that coach, you know, you know, stuck there looking at our film and, 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 and a completely different team showed up on, <laughs> on that. What was your advantage, Kurt? Yeah, I know. It, you know, and it was a blessing, right? So you'd look at it and you say, okay, you lost this very key element player going into your final game. And uh, and by the way, we, we never uh, uh, we never released exactly what his uh, injury was, uh, and that was a good thing about not having sideline, you know. So we never said, you know, well, we're trying to get him back in there. He had a broken elbow; he wasn't coming back. <laughs> <laughs> so they would at least think that we had to. <laughs> they might see him. <laughs> That's perfect. Uh, but anyway, hey, coach, I, you know, thank you for the time. Thank you for uh, the insight. You know, best of luck this season. Um, you know, feel free to beat Calvert up for us as much as possible. Although I think we may catch him, so I guess we're gonna have to do that for you know, because uh, we're we're gonna catch him before you do. You catch him at the end of the season, so. Yeah, coach. So let me put that back at you. Go ahead and go beat up on Demarcus for me. <laughs> that way, I can I can credit you when we get the W against yeah. them in, in week nine. There you go. We'll make we'll make uh, our own little pact here that this year, you know, we're 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 coming after Coach Ashley. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> I hope he's listening. Yeah, we'll we'll, we'll share. We'll send it to him. There we go. Yeah, and he can put it up there on his bulletin board and whoop both of us. Right there, you go. There you go. There you go. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you again, Coach. For those of you that are here, I've been told to, you know, tell you to, to like and share and pass it along and all those good things. We certainly, if you have somebody that you think would be great uh, to, to speak with us, go over some film, we'd certainly like you to reach out. It's uh, coach, uh, coach at coachg.us uh, or just go to sixes1.com and fill out the form. Uh, we appreciate uh, Coach Shelton and his time. Uh, thanks, thanks to all the support that we've gotten so far, and uh, everybody have a blessed day.